We're presenting for the small screen and right now I'm going to talk about how you can stand out from the crowd. What can be not louder but apart and how could a manifesto possibly help you to work through this? Now, I think standing out from the crowd is a good idea, but if you ever look at the situation and see what people do, most people try and be loud by jumping up and down and making a lot of noise to be noisier than the rest of the crowd, and I'm not sure that that's always the right idea. For me, there's a simpler situation. I want to start by just breathing. Before you even start, take a moment to take it all in, breathe deep, keep it in, Breathe out and keep it out. We call it four square breathing and you know it's a fantastic idea to do this before you start thinking about an idea, before you start putting your talk together and most certainly before you start to present or deliver that talk. If you do four square breathing, which is four seconds of breathing in, keeping it in for four seconds, breathing out for four seconds slowly and keeping it out for four seconds and you repeat that four times, it's definitely going to make you feel calm because it oxygenates the brain, you are relaxed, you are clear about it and most of all you were quiet for a few moments with your mind and with your body and now you are ready to begin. After this, I would definitely think about my why again. Now I'm going to pause here with a little story. Last year I was thrilled when the Professional Speakers Association of South Africa invited me to host a, a uh, discussion um, and it was interesting because I had international guests and my first guest was David Averin um, and as I introduced him I had researched him online and done a lot of uh, checking out of his clips. I really stalked him and he was fantastic really looks like a leading a Hollywood leading man in a movie, really great look, always in suits, always in jackets, and so slick when he presents in all of the clips that I saw. And so when I introduced him to the panel, I said, David, you are so wonderful at this, you're so slick, you must have been doing this for years in front of the camera. And he stopped me and he said, no, I haven't. I only started doing this when lockdown happened in March and I was startled because he was just so amazing. And I asked him how it was that he did this. And here's what he said. He said, we all know what professional looks like. And, and it's really something that got me to start thinking about this because the truth of it is, it's not only the speakers and presenters who know what professional looks like, it's also our audiences. They've seen the stuff happen in that 16 by nine frame and it is slick when you watch it on YouTube. It is slick when you watch it on Netflix. And so in the movies as well, things move forward. There's music, there's graphics, it looks fantastic. And here in this particular space, people sometimes just sit there in a tiny little corner somewhere in the screen and a whole huge slide filled to the brim with information just gently rocks us to sleep. We know what professional looks like and so do the audience members. So think about that when next you get into the space and start putting together your slide deck and your talk because it is that important. I'm going to get back to this. I started with a list that was similar. What is it that you can do immediately that makes you different? I think you can start on time. Don't have long introductions. Don't never, never in fact read a bio, ever. Seriously, don't do housekeeping up front. That's for live events and stuff because people want to know where the bathroom is. In their homes, they really already know where it is. Don't start with some cliche like without further ado. Don't call it a, a Zoom webinar. It's your webinar. And finally, also, Make it about your audience. They are there to invest time, to be with you. They're gonna spend that hour or 48 minutes if you use the formula and be careful not to overrun. And so, if I have to get back to that image of standing out from the crowd, I would say that the difference is not to be louder, not to be taller, not to be jumping up and down and, and doing something that's distracting, but simply just to go and stand apart. Do something differently. And when I started thinking about how we can do this and how we can add value, I really started thinking about a manifesto. 
Now I know this is more serious as a kind of a, a declaration and it's a little, it may have overtones of something that's political, but if you think about that kind of serious level of commitment that you can make to say what it is that you stand for and how you're going to get that information across to audiences so that it always speaks from your personality and from your brand's point of view, but connects with the audience, think about how amazing that would be. Something else that I started borrowing from uh, um, entrepreneurship world is, is the BHAG. The BHAG is a big, hairy, audacious goal, and the idea is really just to see if you can um, have a, a compelling target for your organization or for yourself that says, this is my true north and this is what I'm aiming for. And so I thought to put these ideas together a little bit and see what you think of this idea. You uh, work with a declaration, a serious commitment that captures three or four values that resonate with you. Now, if you could see what that looks like and write it down and perhaps articulate a kind of a big, hairy, audacious goal for yourself, you could get to have a manifesto. And, and for me, when I started looking at uh, myself and what it is that I'm doing, I started thinking about a manifesto that talks about those things that are really important to me. It is to have unparalleled quality. I want to have the highest integrity of the information that I share with people. And more importantly, I want it to be results driven. So if I really started to look at this as a personal manifesto and think about how it, that finds itself or what that looks like, it probably is to have considered design, to work with stuff or say stuff because it matters, it matters to me and it should matter to my clients, and also that I would like to demonstrate impact. I think that that's something really important. And then lastly, I started just cobbling out a first draft of a kind of a, um, a BHAG, which was really just to, to try and be the best in the business as a, an original speaker's director. And I really would like to invite you to think through these ideas a little and see if there's something like this that could resonate for you and how you could make this work in your world of communication and what it is that you're putting together as messages.